So again, by pacifism, I don't, I don't mean never resisting violence. So I don't mean that if someone is coming at you with an ax, you shouldn't fight back or anything like that. Uh, so ra so and, uh, rather, what I mean by pacifism is you know, opposition to war, right? And so, so you know, like, you know, like organized, you know, violence organized by governments. And again, so what exactly, how exactly is that different? And again, the answer is that war is actually almost never defensive in the sense that all, war almost always involves either deliberately murdering or recklessly killing innocent people, right? So this, you know, again, like, isn't it theoretically possible that it wouldn't be that way? Sure. But in practice, any time you fight any kind of a serious war, you either wind up deliberately murdering, murdering a whole bunch of civilians or you wind up recklessly endangering them, where you go and you drop a bomb you know, in, in the general vicinity of a whole bunch of civilians and you kill them and say, well, collateral damage, what's the big deal? You know, if the police fought crime the same way that the U.S. government wages, wages war, <laughs> uh, the, uh, the US, you know, this would be way bigger protest than anything that we're getting right now. Because right. look, you need to go and, uh, so I'd say, you know, now, at minimum, this seems to me like there is some moral problem with war, so, which again is glossed over by the idea, you know, well, it's, we're just defending ourselves. Well, normally you're defending yourself by as well as by murdering a bunch of innocent people. So, you know, at first glance, this seems like it's a problem. People often want to say, no, there's no innocence on the other side. It's like, there's no innocent babies in the other country. There's no one who's never done anything. Seems like this is a pretty flimsy defense. And then there's also the, well, anyone we kill is totally on the hands of the bad guys that we're fighting against. And it's like, so really? So... Like, what if you went and like bombed people in the neighboring country? Would that be on the hands of the, of the, of the bad guys too? Like, why exactly is it that, like, like is there some limit to what, you know, to what you can blame on the bad guys? I mean, it's one thing if you've got someone holding a hostage right there and they're shooting. But again, what if, say, there's just a bunch of, there's a school next to, next to a criminal. Can you go and bomb the school because, well, it's, that's on him. You know, the fact that we killed that, all the kids in that school, like, they're like sad, but you know, we were just trying to get that one murderer. It's like, well, hey, yeah, it seems like a like very flimsy defense. Now, again, so like I am actually never an absolutist. Uh, so I'm always willing to say, all right, maybe we have to do this terrible thing for the greater good, right? So I always want to be open to that argument. Mm -hmm. But that's where I say, all right, well, let's actually go and carefully look at how much, how, how great is this good and how certain can you really be that you got it? So... Um, you know, so you know, just just just, back, just to back up. So, the, you know, so you know, the argument for Basman's first step is just accepting the harsh reality that war is not really defensive. It does involve actually going and murdering or at least manslaughtering a whole lot of innocent people. And like, mm -hmm. no matter the nicest country that wages war, the most careful one does this. That you know, like with modern weaponry, it would be hard to do otherwise. Can that can that be in and of itself moral though? Like, so in well, a case, so, so, so in know, a case of World War II, right. where we weren't our homeland, well. Right. Pearl Harbor, yes. but our, our homeland mm -hmm. wasn't threatened by the Nazis mm -hmm. per se. By we killed a lot of people and, mm -hmm. and the Allies yeah, yeah. firebombed Dresden and all that, but we also then saved a lot right. of lives. Right. So, so again, that's what. So that's that's that next step. But again, yeah. first step is just accepting that the that the United States government murdered a lot of innocent a lot of some innocent people. They murdered the United States government murdered children. Mm -hmm. Right. They did the kind of thing that we attack terrorists for, which uh, like which is murdering a bunch of, of, of innocent people for the uh, because you think it's for the greater good. And again, normally when we when we when we attack it when we say terrorists are terrible people for this, we don't have some big factual argument about how what they're doing isn't really for the greater good. It's like you murdered innocent people. Mm -hmm. That's a terrible thing to do. Right, so I mean, it's just like you know, so say like, like there's at least a moral presumption against this, which maybe could be overcome again for the greater good, but that's where I say that you know, so there's this great philosophical example involving a doctor who's got five patients who each need a different organ donation, and then a guy walks by who happens to be perfectly healthy, and the doctor thinks hmm, maybe I should go and murder that guy <laughs> and harvest his organs. And then he searches it, he has no family, no one's really gonna miss this guy. I can save five lives by murdering one person. Seems like a good idea. All right, now, people's normal reaction to this is that's horrible, and then, and then if you start ramping I'd up the numbers- I wanna know a little more yeah, about the yeah. guy. Start yeah. ramping up the numbers, maybe it's a million people. All right, all right, that's fine. But anyway, at least that five to one ratio seems to really bother people. And say, no, you can't go and deliberately murder a person to save five other people. All right, so, it is this it is this premise that I bring in in my case against war saying look all right now maybe that there's a there, there's a war for the greater good but are you actually getting something like this five to one ratio right and furthermore how confident can you really be and that's where I bring in the last body of evidence which is that people's predictions about the results of war are terrible 
So again, the whole idea of prediction is you have to say what you think is going to happen before it happens, and then you look <laughs> at what occurs and see how accurate your prediction was. Yeah. All right. So uh, there is a fantastic political psychologist named Phil Tetlock who ran a big experiment along these lines. So in the 1980s, he went and asked a bunch of foreign policy experts their predictions, and then 20 years later came back and weighed their predictions against the actual results, and they did really badly. Right, and so this is experimental evidence on people's people's ability to forecast the actual long-run benefits of war are very poor. Uh, of course, we don't really need to do experiments. We can just go to the uh, views about what happened would have happened in World War One, where all sides are saying out of the trenches by Christmas. No one is saying I think this will end in communist revolution, <laughs> and certainly no one was saying, well, I think the long-run result of this will be a communist regime in North Korea, a country doesn't even exist right now. Right. And yet, if you know your history, that is what, what, what that is the key event in why there's communism in North Korea. So now, if you snap these pieces together, so more presumption against war, five to one ratio, something like that minimum in order for it to be justified, and then finally, great uncertainty about what the effects of war are. That's where I get my case for pacifism. It's like anytime there is a war, anytime there is someone proposing a war, my answer is all right. So, like, first of all, so is it even is it even plausible that the that you are going to save five times as many lives as you are going to murder here? Mm -hmm. And and is it reasonable to be that confident given how bad most people's track records are? Right. And if you put that together, then I say that for almost any actual war, it's really hard to make the case in, a case in its favor.